Hi everyone, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a cozy sort of fall-ish themed teddy bear set. This is largely inspired by Yogurt Nail Korea's new gingerbread collection. I was lucky enough to be sent this from Sweetie Nail Supply to review along with some stamps from Maniology. They had reached out and asked if I would like to try some of their stamping plates. I saw that they had a plaid pattern set and so I requested that and thought it would be perfect for this teddy bear design. To start off with, here is everything that I received. I will go through and swatch for you. So this is the Yogurt Nail Korea Gingerbread Collection. I love the packaging. It's so cute and very Christmas, fall-y, holiday themed. The thing that gets me about a lot of Korean Japanese gel brands is just how nice the whole experience of unboxing a collection is. I have tried Yogurt Nail Korea's other collections, so I don't have the full collection, but I do have quite a few from the Bunny Chu set, and I really like the consistency. It's a slightly thicker, I would almost say, syrup gel that I actually prefer. So here are all of the colors. It is a 10 color set. This is the swatch card. It comes with a little stand, which I am actually really liking the swatch cards with stands because I do have some shelving units in my nail room now. So it's really nice to be able to like prop them up on the shelves and display my swatches. Here are all of the colors, very warm toned, lots of reds, purples, greens, tans, and then one blue in there that I actually use for the design today. But the bottles as always are gorgeous. I love that they are colored so that you can easily tell what color is inside. The formula on these is just really nice and creamy. I don't know, again, they seem slightly thicker than maybe some other syrup brands like Vivoc. It might have also just been cold in my room. But with two coats, I would say almost all of them self-level super nicely. No streaking whatsoever, really good even coverage. Some of the darker ones, I will say, needed a bit of a mix in order to get a really nice even coat. This one here in particular, I noticed when I swatched it without even really mixing up the contents, there was some slight streaking. You could kind of see the pigments there. But all I really had to do was roll the brush around a little bit, get that gel polish mixed up. It was probably sitting somewhere for a while before making its way to me and that gave a lot more even of a coat with just one coat. And to be fair, I'm using some pretty thick layers here, so it's not giving exactly the most even coverage. If you go in with thinner layers, you are probably going to have some better results. I just I was trying to rush this because at this point I think I started filming at maybe 9 p.m. and I had wanted to finish the whole video, the swatches, the design and everything by like 1 a.m. I was filming on a Friday night and it just, it didn't happen so I was kind of rushing the swatches here. But I wanted to be able to show you all what each color looks like. I can tell this color is going to be controversial. I actually really like it. I'm a big fan of green. It is on the verge, I would say, of being like a little bit too yellow green. I believe this is meant to be sort of a chartreuse type shade, uh, like an olivey green, but I could see how some might not like it. It might read a little bit too um, baby puke for them, split pea soup, something like that. So. Let me know down in the comments, are you a fan of shade 77? This is a really nice darker olive tone, almost like an army green, I would say. I have some vivid greens, and so I was really glad to get this one as it's a little bit more muted. It feels like a more natural kind of vegetal green, really pretty shade. And then this blue here is a really nice muted, almost like an aqua blue, I would say. I have something somewhat similar. I think it's called Black Sesame from maybe the Vintage Film Collection. But that one is a little bit more of like a cool toned blue. I would say this is a slightly warm toned, as I said, muted aqua blue. Really nice shade. I do use this for the end design. 
You can tell that the lighter colors, I will say, have a slightly more even coverage when you paint with them. The darker ones, I would say you want to go in with a thinner coat when you paint and maybe just do three coats instead of two to get the most even covered for these ones. This purple too is gorgeous. I'm a huge fan of all of the like purple reds in this collection. So, so pretty. I, I really like all the shades as a whole, actually. I think they work really well together. I think it's a nice variety of different colors and they definitely have that muted fall look to them. The colors aren't super bright, which would read more summer spring. They're just really nice, darker muted tones. I am a big fan. And to be quite honest, I don't have a lot of syrup polishes that are these sort of darker colors. And so yeah, I'm really excited to have these. I think they will make amazing holiday sets with all of those reds and greens. I'm super excited to use them more. As you can see here, the shade is one that I was talking about where you might want to go in with three thinner coats to get the most even coverage because this one is a little bit more sheer, which I have noticed a lot of dark reds tend to be that way. I don't know if it's the pigment that you have to use to get a red or what, but this just something that I've noticed is dark reds tend to be on the more sheer side. This purple was a really nice sort of like mauve or dark mauve color. Definitely unique, not something that I really have in my collection. And that rounds out all of the swatches. I'm super pleased with this set as a whole. If you are not interested in buying the whole collection, if you just want to pick up a few of the shades, one really nice thing is that Sweetie Nail Supply does sell individuals too. So these are available for individual sale. I believe it's $14 a bottle, which actually I would say is a pretty good deal for Korean gel polish, especially syrup gels. You can also use my code GETPRESSED for 10% off. And let's look at what Maniology sent me. So I have actually seen so many Maniology ads. I've seen so many people using these stamping kits and I've always really wanted to try it. I just, quite frankly, um, I don't stamp a lot anymore because when I'm doing content for nails, I try to hand paint as much as possible to challenge myself, but I do really like nail stamps and I think they can be a great shortcut a great time saver, um, a great entry into nail art if you aren't somebody who has a lot of experience with hand painting. And so I was really excited when they reached out to me and offered to send me some things. They are a company based out of Hawaii, hence the cute little sticker and the cute little pineapple picker. I really like that picker that I just showed. It means that I don't have to get acetone on my gloves when I'm trying to clean up a plate. I love that each plate is labeled, so every plate has a specific code so that for some reason, maybe you want to recommend a plate to somebody and you don't remember what it was called. The code is right there on the plate itself. It comes well protected with the blue plastic. Always make sure you take off the plastic. I've seen some people accidentally stamp, um, not understanding that the blue needs to come off and it doesn't work, but it is nice and protected by that plastic until you remove it. I can already tell these are definitely a higher quality than like the cheaper ones that you get off of Timu or Shein, uh, AliExpress. They have this nice plastic backing, which I do really appreciate because it makes them a little bit more sturdy, less flimsy. And when I wipe them down with acetone, I know that the polish isn't going to get all over like a cardboard backing, which I have some that have a cardboard backing and it's just a mess. This is their stamping polish. It's meant to be like a sticky base coat. It is a regular polish, so you don't clear it or anything. It just dries down and is a little bit tacky so that your polish sticks. Here's the actual kit that I was sent. So they do have these little starter kits that come with a plate a duo of stamping polish and top coat, the actual scraper for the polish, and a rubber stamper, along with this little instruction booklet, which is super helpful. I will say they have a ton of videos on their like YouTube, on their website, 
that help new stampers get started because it can be a bit of a finicky process. There are some learning tips that make this a lot easier. I do really like their scraper. So you can see there it's smaller and much thinner than some of the other ones that I have. That flexibility means that it just really gives you a nice clean scrape over the plate. And I appreciate that their stampers are the jelly style. These kind are so good because they're transparent, which means you can see exactly where you're placing your stamp. And then this is the little stamping duo with the top coat and the stamping polish. I appreciate that the kit comes with basically everything you need for stamping art. And then they also let me pick out some stamping polishes. So this is a collection, it's their classic collection. It comes with white, black, silver, gold, blue, and red, which are kind of just like your standard nail colors. And so I thought it would be a really good place to begin with. These stamping polishes, I will say, are a bit thicker than others that I've tried, which I actually don't mind at all. I, I think I might like that. It seems like it sits in the grooves slightly better. Here's my first try with this kit. I just brush the polish on, scrape only once at a 45 degree angle, and then gently roll the stamper over. And it picked up the design super easily. It was very clear. I'm just cleaning up the extra with a little lint roller there. And then I go ahead and swatch all of them on the caps. I do think it's really nice that these polishes are for one, quite big, and then for two, they come with a place where you can swatch them on the top. So you can see kind of exactly how the stamping polish is going to look on the nail. It will look slightly different in the bottle than on the nail, just because in the bottle, you're seeing like a really concentrated version of the color. So I like that the swatching is an option. One of the things that I quickly learned with this polish is once you go to stamp it, you really want to press down firmly and then roll the stamper off to get the best adhesion. You don't need to roll the stamper too hard on the actual plate, but when you go to adhere it to the nail surface, I would recommend pushing pretty hard and then rolling it off. And my usual acetone on a cotton pad works perfectly fine for cleaning this up. Again, because everything is plastic, I'm not worried about damaging anything, and it was just a really easy process. I forgot to show this off, but they also sent me a little cleanup brush. And if you know me, you know that I appreciate a brush with a cap, so this is really nice to have. It's just an angled brush for going around like the cuticle area if you accidentally stamp over your nail and get extra around the nail bed and now we can get to the fun stuff so i'm just going to start by prepping my nail tips as always please make sure that you do your research before using any products and try to wear gloves if you're going to be coming in contact with uncured gel to avoid a potential allergy in the future once everything is prepped i then go in with a base coat of yogurt nail korea's base gel I've been using this lately and I do like it. It's a thinner base gel, which I appreciate if I know I'm going to be doing a lot of layers. I will say, and I don't know how I feel about it quite yet, there is like a stringiness almost to it. The product really seems to grab onto itself. So you can see here when I'm pulling the brush away, it almost wants to stick. I can only assume that it helps with the staying power if the product itself is really trying to adhere already to itself in this form. I haven't really done a longevity test yet, but I do like the consistency. I do like the thinness, especially since I know I'm going to be layering a lot of polish. To color the nails, I start with one coat of color 79, that really pretty dusty blue. I do a thin coat all over the nails. I do want this to be quite opaque, so I decide to do thinner coats and three of them and I just go over each nail. I got this little stand thing off of AliExpress and I thought it was going to be really nice, really handy to have like all of the nails on one stand so I can cure and work quickly. I decided I don't like it actually um, because I back paint, which means I go from the free edge towards the cuticle area sometimes in order to get really even coverage and I switched directions. I found myself painting towards the middle where the nails met, and it was just 
I was accidentally hitting some of the nails on the other side when I was painting. So I don't love this stand. I do see an use for it, but I think I will probably go back to using my individual handstands in the future. So when I was trying to design this set, I started with the Yogurt Nail Korea collection and I knew I had wanted to do like a teddy bear look with the brown and the blue. And so I started looking up inspiration on Instagram and I found this picture here. So this was the major inspo that I really used for the set along with this other one here of the 3D teddy bear. My design process is all over the place. Usually I try to find pictures off of Instagram, pictures that I can at least tag the creator in so that they can get their credit. But sometimes the design is just based on like images I remember seeing off of Google. And so I don't remember to save them, unfortunately, but luckily I have the inspos for this one. I really do feel like I need to start drawing out my designs though. I know I've been saying this since the beginning, but I found that I wasted a lot of time on this particular set because I had this idea that I wanted to do like latte art on the brown nails. It just, it didn't work out. And so I end up going in with this doodle design using these jelly roll pens. These are just white jelly pens from the brand Sakura. I'm using the size 10 pen here, which is a thicker one. I love using gel pens on nails because it's a super simple way to do that like doodled look and have more control. If I tried going in and doing these shapes with like a brush and a white paint polish, it just would not give the same effect. And quite honestly, I had these gel pens in my closet. I've had them since my traditional art days. And one day I decided to just use them and try them out on nails and I found that they worked really well. So I have since then purchased a bunch of other colors to use on nails because it's just a really easy way to do some hand-drawn art. For the plaid pattern, I decided to use the stamping plate and some inks to show you kind of two different variations of plaid. I thought I might want to do this pattern here I picked it up, it picked up fine, I just was realizing as I put it down that it was a little bit too busy for the design that I wanted to do, a little bit too loud, and so I ended up using a different pattern, this one here, this thinner design. I really coat the plate well, scrape off only once with the scraper, and then lightly roll the stamper over, and you can see it picks everything up beautifully. Stamping is interesting because you might think that you really need to push that rubber stamper down and that you might need to scrape multiple times, but you don't. You just want to scrape once at a 45 degree angle, not too high, not too low. Once at a 45 degree angle is fine. And then gently roll the stamper over. You don't want to push. If you push, it actually gives you a worse design and it's okay if there's polish what seems like outside of the grooves on the surface still you can see it's not like a clean scrape somehow that's fine i don't really know the science behind it i'll be honest but you don't need like a clean stamp in order to get a clean stamp if that makes any sense and cleanup is super easy i like a lint roller but you can also just use tape and then i place the cap back on i did get some paint on it earlier unfortunately but that's okay and then I just clean everything up with acetone. Again, that picker is super handy because I can keep my gloves nice and free from acetone, even though they're nitrile. But yeah, super easy process for what looks like a really intricate design. For the second plaid option, I'm gonna show you how to do it with alcohol inks. So this is the white doughy marbly set. It is the only white alcohol ink I have, but I do really like it. You just paint on one stripe and you want to do this in one smooth motion. You can go over it a couple times if you need to, but if you mess with it too much, it's not going to dry down like it did there, very smooth. You can see when I'm doing it here on the across section, it does tend to separate a little bit because I think I pushed it around too much. I was using a little bit too much of the liquid 
so I didn't get that smooth result I was looking for, but for the most part, it looks fine. I'm doing this on both the pointer and the pinky nail. I like having two nails somewhat similar in a set. For one, it just helps me save time on not designing five completely different nails, and I also just like the cohesion that it brings. I do eventually want to do some full 510 design sets. I just, I don't have the time right now, unfortunately, with school keeping me occupied. Um, I can't believe we're actually already five weeks in though. That's crazy to me. I feel like summer was just the other day, but that's okay. Life's just moving on by fast right now because I'm busy. I'm taking the degel paints to create a little stitch pattern here down the middle of the two lines that I made. I want it to look almost like uh, something handmade, hand sewn, and so I'm just adding these nice thick textured stitch marks. I guess I was trying to copy the look of like the, the sheer ribbon that has the stitching going down the middle, but yeah, happy with it so far. I am going to matte top coat those with Yogurt Nail Korea's cotton matte top coat. I do really like this stuff. It's not too thin. It's nice and glossy to where it gives a really even coat of that matte top coat. I hate a streaky matte top coat. That's the worst. I think it ruins the design. And so I was very happy with this one. And then I decided I wanted to try like the, the 3D heart look. I was going to do a full heart. So I map out the bottom point and the center point where I want the two arches to meet. This will help you just get a good idea of what your heart's going to look like at the end. However, I do think in hindsight, I used too much of this Jello Jello Zigzag Gel. I haven't used it before, so I wasn't sure exactly how much comes out at a time or how thick it is. So this was definitely a learning process and I did learn. I learned that I need to use it a little bit more sparingly. I think I want a little bit thinner of lines in the future, but I did really like how it held its shape for the most part. It was easy to move around and manipulate. And I love that it's non-wipe because then I know that I can go in and use it as the last step in a design and I won't have to top coat it or anything. So yeah. I did the 3D hearts and now I'm on to sculpting the actual bears. So I use my Chris Clay for this. This is the clay from Chrisanya Neri. I really like the consistency of this stuff. It's nice and thick. I'm able to sculpt things that will hold their shapes very well. I will make sure to link her Instagram and her shop down below. She also has really nice glow in the dark clays out at the moment. I don't have them just because they're not in my budget currently, but I will say they would make for some amazing Halloween designs. And on her Instagram, she also does tutorials. So I would definitely check her out. I love her work, but I've just mixed a custom brown color that is similar to that brown color on the ring fingers. And I'm starting with a ball, a little circle. And unfortunately, I messed up and I was really bad at staying in frame for filming this portion. So I apologize in advance, um, but basically I take that circle and I start texturing it with my little like nail pick. I don't really know what this tool is called. I know it's meant for cuticles, but I am just using it here to add that like fur texture. Apologies to anyone watching this who has trepophobia because this is probably a little bit triggering. I'm also using one of those just plastic dusting brushes to add the initial texture before going in with that tool to really help deepen those grooves and create that fur look. But yeah, I'm, I'm very mad at myself for not being more in frame for this design because it is just a really fun one. But basically, it's a group of like six sorry, seven circles. So you start with the body, you add on the feet as two little oblong balls, and then you add the little arms, and then you add the head, and then you add his little snout, and then you add his ears. So it's just taking things piece by piece, really going in and molding it before giving it a flash cure so that you don't mess up anything that you have already worked on. 
And then I am attempting here to make the croissant the traditional way that you would make croissants, which is by rolling the dough out into a triangle shape and then curling it in over itself. Um, I didn't like the results of this because unlike croissant dough, the clay doesn't rise. And so I scrapped that, decided to table it and come back to it later. Instead, I work on my little bear holding a heart. I wanted this to be like a little heart cushion. And so I used the white to sculpt it and then created just a bear head. These two are going to be his little ears. I'm using that little pointed side to make the indents of the ears and I thought it worked really well. And then I had to remake some more of that color. So I'm mixing it by hand this time, which I found a little bit easier. And then sculpting his little arms little hands holding the heart and last up is just to add his little snout this process took me way way longer than i want to admit i think in total i had nine hours of footage for this video between the sculpting the painting and the swatching and whatnot although i guess to be fair that's pretty good considering i usually do a uh, one hand designs not two full hands so Overall, not too bad. Here I am attempting the croissant a second time. This time I'm working in separate shapes. So I make this little rounded triangle and then I attach more triangles onto it, making them curve towards the center, if that makes sense. I felt like this was easier than trying to make the croissant shape overall and then adding the grooves. Although I do think it would be possible to do it that way to just kind of make like the crescent shape and then put in grooves. It might actually be easier, I'm not sure. Um, this is just how I approached it and it worked pretty well. And then I decided I wanted to do something else on the other hand. And so I made some little cookies. These are going to be like the frosted oatmeal cookies. So simple, but some of my favorite cookies quite honestly. I love a good frosted oatmeal cookie. Again, there's that trypophobia warning. Um, I'll try to put something in text so that you are warned before we get to this point because I could understand how it would be a little bit unnerving for some. But yeah, I'm just texturing it to give it that crumbly cookie look, curing it and then adding on a second cookie over the top. These are probably the easiest shapes. They're just flattened discs. So I flatten it in my hand there and then stick it on, smooth that out with a brush covered in a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and then add my texture and you are good to go with that design. For the painted details, I'm going to be using my trusty MPA art palette. I'm loving this thing as of late. It just has a wide range of colors, which I need to do art with. And I, I do like my degel paints, but I like that these ones, I don't necessarily need to mix. I will say they are slightly, slightly more transparent than the degel paints. So if you're looking for opacity, I would go with the DJ paints. I do reach for them, but I really like them for things that I don't think need full, full opacity. And don't get me wrong. You can get full opacity with these. Um, you just need like a slightly thicker layer. Here I wanted almost like a wash. And so I was happy to use these to get just a little bit of color on the edge of the bear's limbs and get that like nice baked look on the baked goods. I do think I overdid it on the croissant slightly, which ends up not being a problem because I mess up later, you will see. But yeah, I am just adding that little bit of detail with the brown color. This is the um, Izemi art brush. I really like it. It's just a pointed brush, super soft, great for getting larger areas. I think it has a nice pointed tip though to where you can paint on smaller details as needed. Once I have that done, I stick everything in to cure or so I thought I did. And then I go in with the little details on the bear's face, his nose, his mouth, and his eyes. I do think in the future, I would do some sort of maybe like matte top coat over these areas because I was noticing that the black paint 
bled slightly into the little grooves and it was hard to get like a very clear eye shape, a very clear nose shape with the gel polish and those grooves. Especially for some reason on this one, I noticed it was a huge issue. Maybe because I was trying to paint a smaller area. So yeah, if you recreate this, just know I would recommend um, like putting some sort of top coat kind of smooth over those areas just a little bit before painting on the details. But overall, I still think he looks pretty good, pretty cute. The brush I'm using here is my favorite for super tiny details. It is the Diami short liner brush. I'll have everything linked below. And then for the thumbnail, I thought the background was feeling kind of plain. So I go back in with that Sakura jelly roll and I'm just adding little stitching designs around the nail. Just little dashed lines to give the illusion of stitches because this is a teddy bear, teddy bear, <laughs> a teddy bear themed set. And I, I just thought it was an easy way to fill up some of that blank space in the background. I do really like the overall effect. I added a couple of the little doodles as well. Once again, just to kind of fill up that space, add a little bit more interest. So here I'm adding like a little heart and some stars. I just, I love using the gel pens for this. It just makes the process so quick, so easy. Highly recommend it. I've never had any problems with painting a top coat over this or anything like that. So definitely check out the Sakura brand Jelly Roll pens. They're really nice, opaque. They're very much a favorite, I believe, for people who do manga art and things like that too, because they are that really nice opaque white. They're really good for highlights. That's actually what I originally got them for, was for doing like colored pencil portraits. I'm adding some stitching here on the middle fingers as well, because I thought those blue backgrounds were kind of plain. I still think they're a little too plain. Um, I wish I had done something else with them other than just the stitching around the edge now that I have the final look but that's okay my designs don't always turn out 100% the way that I want them to I'm sure a lot of people can say that I am always looking for ways to improve which might seem a little bit nitpicky I am very happy with the overall designs usually that I create but that doesn't mean that I'm not looking for how I can learn how I can grow how I can improve for the next time. So here's what everything is looking like so far. We are ready for top coat and this is my first mistake. I wasn't looking at the bottle. I thought this was the matte top coat and it was not, it was the glossy top coat. So I pulled the nail out and I'm like, hmm, that's not right. This isn't the matte top coat. And so I have to re top coat this nail. And unfortunately, this is the nail with the bear on it. So early on, I did mess up some of that texture by top coating it, filling in the grooves. So I have to be really careful here with the matte top coat. One tip is to use a little makeup sponge. If you have texture, something rough like this, and just dab off the excess, it will soak up the extra top coat that's sitting in those grooves and you get something similar to the texture underneath, but still with a nice thin protective layer of top coat. That way you can preserve all of that nice texture that you've created. Here's my second mistake. Um, I thought I had cured this croissant. I did not. And so all that painted detail wiped off with the top coat, but it did give me the option of going back and adding that brown again and being a little bit lighter handed with it this time. I wanted to bring in more 3D texture and so for the seams here of this little like heart cushion that I made, I used the Madame Glam 3D embossing gel. This is in white. I can only think to compare it to maybe like the Cocoist white bond accessory gel. I really actually want to pick that up next time I order from Sweetie Nail Supply because I like the Madame Glam. I do find it's just a little bit sticky though. I can't get completely smooth lines with it. So I'm looking to try some other 3D embossing gels that are non-wipe, that's important. This one I use for the most part because it is non-wipe. 
I love the D-gel paints. I think I could get a similar result with them, but they're not non-wipe and neither are the MPA R palette gels. So I tend to reach for this for white 3D texture because it is non-wipe. So I'm just adding some extra lines to finish off this hand sewn kind of gingham checkered pattern that I was going for. Um, I really like designs, check designs that have different line widths, line weights. So I was really happy with how that turned out. I wanted to bring in that 3D line work to the other hand as well. So I just go over that center crossing line or set of lines with that 3D gel and that was it. I felt that was enough. Just a little something to kind of zhuzh up that design and make it match the other hand. I'm always trying to find ways to make my design look very consistent by having similar textures, colors, patterns, whatever it is. And last step is to literally frost the cookies with a little palette knife. And this is the final design. I'm super pleased with how it turned out. I think it's just so cute, so precious, so cozy. Of course, there are some things that I would change, making the heart a little bit skinnier, and of course, filming the bear all the way. But overall, I'm super happy with it. I'm also just really enjoying doing nails and working on my channel. I've been trying to clean up my editing and add, you know, some experimental things in my videos. So. I really appreciate everybody who's been here from the beginning, everybody who's watching now. I can't believe that I hit 3,000 subscribers. It honestly, it blows my mind. I'm so thankful to be in a position where I can do nails on the side and just have a creative outlet that I'm able to share with everybody. If you haven't yet, definitely check out my Discord. It's just a fun place for all of us to hang out and chat about nails. I will leave all of the products that I used down below. Thank you so much to Maniology and Sweetie Nail Supply for sending them to me. I have my discount codes there too. Thank you again to everybody who uses them, to everybody who's just here watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.